Hey guys, Keith from the Ash and Fly Shop here. Uh, it's fall, the Rogue River. Our flows are pretty darn low. You know, we're right at around a thousand CFS where I fish most of the time. Um, kind of, you know, it's Scandi flies, really, you know, kind of traditional stuff. And, and so I thought I'd show you a really uh, simple kind of green butt, silver Hilton-y thing with a nice wing on top. And uh, here we go, I'll show you how to do it. So this time of year when I'm tying for the Rogue, uh, I'm also thinking a little bit about the Klamath. Uh, we've got, you know, the Klamath coming up here really fast too. So I'm, I'm paring down my hook sizes a little bit. Uh, this is a seven, these happen to be Daiichi's, uh, but any old, uh, you know, Alec Jackson's would work, any, anything like that. that but I, I like to pare this down and go a little bit smaller just because of uh, you know the skinny water, um, that sort of thing, and then the clam at the fish aren't as big either, so they they like a little smaller fly. So like I said, you know this is a pretty simple fly. There's not a lot to it. Um, it's mostly guinea and a little bit of dubbing and some some thread. So let's get our green thread for our green butt here started, and you can start it anywhere. Um, I'm going to go right about there to start. I'm going to grab some guinea here for my tail. All I'm really going to do is just kind of pare down that tail a little bit, pull it in nice and neat, tie it in just like that. And pull it down a little bit. Yeah, it's gotta go out of my way. It's driving me nuts. Alright, get your little green butt going. Nice and even. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie this off on there. Because I'm gonna change threads. Because I don't need this color anymore after this. So here we go, start up here. We're gonna come back on that. Got my thread started. Uh, this is a Vivas uh, Silver Tinsel. This one's a medium. So I'm gonna put that in there. I'm going to A nice big black spot in there. This is just you know, just keep wrapping until you get even. I'm using a 50 denier that I like a lot. Uh, nice and strong. You can use it with hair. You can use use it with a whole bunch of stuff, but it doesn't build all that fast. So stuff like this, you got to kind of take your time and make sure you get it nice and even and work it in pretty good. But Okay to me, so let's wrap that up. Nice even wraps for that little tinsel. There we go. Let's tie that down pretty good. Uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, Fusion Dubbing by uh, Hairline. You can use any kind of black dubbing in there that you want. I just happen to like the little, uh, the little shiny bits in there. They kind of pop out just a little bit. And we're just going to make a nice little dubbing ball back there, get it started. You know? Not too crazy or anything, but just a nice little dubbing ball to hold out our all our hackle here in a minute. Maybe just a little bit more. Remember with dubbing, a little bit goes a long way, so you can always add more. It's pretty hard to take it off after you put it on though. That 
one thing I like to do, drop this. Now one thing I like to do is just kind of pick some of this out a little bit, get it nice and furry in there. I think it just makes a little bit of noise in the water. Give it a little bit more wiggle. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So, our hackle. Just, you know, I'm using guinea. You don't have to use the whole skin like this. You could just get a package of guinea, and, and this could be any color you want to. You can do orange back here, and then a, you know, kind of turn it into an October caddisy thing if you want. Um, I'm doing this because I had been getting skunked for a little while. And then my buddy Jason um, has been using a, a green butt fly and he's been getting them. So I'm uh, changing up a little bit to out of my normal black and orange that I normally do. And so hopefully I'll, uh, I'll see a steelhead soon from not being a crusty crab and changing a little bit. All right, here we go. We are going to take our scissor and just run this up there gently on the back side of the scissor so it helps it. it. Does two things. It breaks up all the little fibers and it helps it when you're folding it over too. Fold these back. Fold them back. Hold them back. Hold them back. Sweet. Now you could just build a little head right there and that would be a very fishable little fly, but I wanted to add just a just a little bit more uh, something to it, just to, you know, for myself. Um, so I've got some bronze mallard here and I'm gonna do kind of a wing casing there with the bronze mallard. You'll see that I, I've already separated everything from rights to left so that I know you know, I don't have to spend a lot of time looking for uh, for my parts to do this. You are going to want a right and a left when you do this. So there's my left. There, that one looks about right. Stuff it back in the bag here. This is about the one... The only thing I'm actually organized at is uh, keeping these separated. It's kind of terrible. And then find one that's about the same size. I think that's going to do it right there. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I got to cut some of this out of here. Um, so what I'm going to do is look at my feathers and see see what, what my length I kind of want. So I'm going to come in here and just snip it just like that. Get rid of any of my loose ends. Same thing here. Now I'm going to kind of pair this one up on here. Let's see, just like that. So I can kind of gauge where the right length is. And it's right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it one more time. I'm going to take this one and kind of put it up next to each other again. Just getting a 
you know, the same distance. I do it kind of back to back like that and then I can see how far, you know, the other one is right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel this stuff off the bottom very gently so it's not in my way later. All right, now here's one more tip that I do. Once I have my parts and pieces like this, these are all still usable things. So I go ahead and I have another baggie that's got all the cut ends so that when I'm doing this and doing three or four at a time, I can just go see if I've got it in here first before I you know, go destroying a bunch of nice big feathers. Set that in there. Some people would take this part too. You can also take this part and come right over the top and make a nice big veil on there. That works. Um, that's not what we're doing today, but. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lay this to where I kinda want it to sit, right about like that. And I'm gonna pinch. Just very gently bring that thread around. And I'm not trying to do like a Caroline hood or something like that right now, even though you could do it like that with this. But I'm just looking for these wings to kind of sit up and a little bit separate up there. Do the same thing there, just gently grab it. Make sure they're the same length. You know what, I want to trim this one a little bit. It's just a little bit long for my purposes. Tie it down. Let's pull these out of the way. Get rid of them and cut them. It's not a very difficult fly, not a lot of steps, but you kind of get a lot of bang for your buck out of prettiness on the water, you know, with that little bit of a hood there. Um, you know, if you really wanted to, you could do, you could, you could do the, you know, the kind of that, that Lady Caroline hood on it and may really make it fancy. Um, I don't think it's necessary for a fly. You're going to fish a lot. Uh, those hoods are going to get kind of messed up anyways. At this point, you know, same old, same old, you heard me say it before, either UV glue, uh, hard head, however you want to do it. I'm looking to get out of here and go catch a fish in a minute, so I am just going to do the UV glue instead of waiting around. Let's give it a little bit of that extra there. Hit it with the light. So there you go. It's kind of a green butt variant, um, nice little fly, you know, kind of that fall picky fish kind of, you know, when we're, when we're looking to get in front of them when we got skinny water and all right, there you go, go fish.